Hi, this is Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com, right back here on Wager Talk TV with your NFL Fade the Public video for Week 12 this Sunday, November the 27th. Most public sides this Sunday for Week 12. I'm going to give them to you free here in this video in just a moment. We have four very public sides for this Sunday NFL action, plus three additional leans, so seven games covered for free here in the Week 12 edition of Fade the Public for this Sunday, November the 27th. Get into that in just a moment. Quick reminder, November is coming to the end. December is right around the corner. The two best months, in my opinion, to be all sports, all access clients are November and December, as you have four major sports going basically on a daily basis. College and pro football almost every day of the week. And of course, NBA and college basketball is every day of the week. Special offer still remains. I've been giving this to you for the past week by December, and you get the rest of November for free. Made this offer over a week ago, included in this video last week, and I know many of you have jumped on board since. Thank you for getting on board. Great to have you on board, and you've made some money. 14 and 5, 74% all sports over the past one and a half weeks since I first made this offer available. Shame on you if you missed out on the 14 and 5 run, but don't wait any longer. There's still plenty of best bets to go. You get almost over a half week of November, plus all of December now for just $2.99. That's the rest of 2022. No promo code needed. Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com. I've got five college football best bets in the late afternoon and nighttime card for Saturday. So if you're joining us on Saturday afternoon when this video went live, still get plenty of college football best bets Saturday night. And then, of course, a huge NFL card for both Sunday and Monday pro football. Get it for free right now when you buy December. Get the rest of November free. Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com. All right, let's look at the four most public sides this Sunday, week 12 for the NFL, Sunday, November the 26th, uh, 27th rather. And we're going to look at uh, these games in schedule order. They're all pretty public, uh, maybe a little bit more lean on one or the other, but I'm going to call them all equal here. We'll go down in schedule order. Let's start at 1 o'clock Eastern on Sunday. The Baltimore Ravens, a very public side here on Sunday, on the road against the Jacksonville Jaguars. You know, Jacksonville got off to a decent start this season, but it's been pretty tough treading for them since, just 3-7 and seven straight up. Uh, this is a team that has gone 1-6 straight up and against the spread their last seven games in October and November. They've only won and covered once in the past seven games, the past two months. So understandable why the public would want nothing to do with them. Meanwhile, Baltimore is pretty hot right now. Four straight wins, five of their last six. Public actually faded Baltimore last week here in the video. And the public cast with Carolina... Baltimore held the Panthers to just three points, but did not get it done offensively. Only 13 points after coming out of the bye week. So we'll see if the Baltimore offense gets back on track this week. I don't think this is necessarily the public backing the Ravens. I think it's more the public wants nothing to do with the Jacksonville Jaguars, which is understandable. They have definitely struggled once again, going one and six straight up in ATS their last seven, but they are coming off the bye week. Uh, so scheduling edge here for Jacksonville off the bye. Bad teams often fix some problems. They also come off better offensively usually after the buy, and Jacksonville has scored 17 or less in uh, five of uh, four of their last six games. Um, so I do think the bye week came at a good time for Jacksonville. This might be one of those situations where it is worth fading the public. We'll keep an eye on this game, see where the line settles on Sunday. But once again, heading to the weekend, uh, currently Jacksonville, Baltimore rather, a three-and-a-half-point road favorite. Might see a four. I've actually seen a four at the South Point in Vegas already. If you like Jacksonville, I would wait. You probably will find a plus four as the public looks like they're pretty heavy on Baltimore this Sunday. Another very public play this Sunday also in the AFC um, is Cincinnati at Tennessee, but it's not the favorite in this game. It's the underdog. This is the most public dog of the week. You know, it's always a red flag when we get a public underdog in the NFL, and this is the most public dog this week on Sunday, and that's the Tennessee Titans plus the two and a half at one o'clock Eastern hosting the AFC defending champ, Cincinnati Bengals. Um, this line has been two and a half in most spots. I've briefly seen some two and a halves, minus 15. So looks like there might be a little bit of sharp money actually on Cincinnati as the line is rising higher in some spots despite the heavy amount of the public consensus being on the underdog Titan. So we'll keep a closer eye on this near kickoff on Sunday, see if it officially becomes a sharp square divide. But once again, the most public underdog this week on Sunday, November the 27th for week 12 is the Tennessee Titans. For those of you that are new to this video, the premise, the concept is quite simple. We look to fade the public. Uh, the public was heavy on one side. There's usually some line value going the other way. Uh, this has worked extremely well over the years, and I followed it. I started this video exactly two years ago in late November of 2020. 
Those of you there with me initially, remember we went 31 and eight through the Super Bowl two years ago, and we've done it ever since. Now, fading the public on the blind is not the way to go. You selectively pick your spots. I'm mentioning seven games on this video this week. We're not going to just fade the public at all seven. The public is not always wrong. In fact, the public did pretty well. The three leans I gave you for Thursday, the public went 3-0 and on Thanksgiving Day and night. So we will be interesting to see how they do this weekend on Sunday. Uh, but once again, public usually sides towards favorites about 65-70% to 70 of the time. So whenever they're on an underdog, it's always a red flag. And it's an angle that's worked extremely well over the years. And the most public dog this week, once again, is the Tennessee Titans plus 2.5 at home against Cincinnati. And it's understandable why the public is backing the Titans here. They're 7-3 and three straight up, better record than the 6-4 and four Bengals, and 8-2 uh, and two against the spread this year. Cincinnati is a quiet 7-3 and three against the number, and I say a quiet because they've gone 6-1 and one ATS their last seven after a fairly slow start this season, but Tennessee is the team that is on a roll. Going back to the start of October, they're 6-1 and one straight up, a perfect 7-0 and oh against the spread the last couple months. They've been getting it done with a running game. In fact, they have scored... 24 points or less in six of their last seven games. They've scored 21 or less in five of those seven. So they've been getting it done with defense and the running game. Not surprising, they're six and one to the under those last seven games. Uh, so Titans and the under has been cashing this season. Eight and two against the spread, seven and three to the under. Uh, we'll see if Cincinnati, who has been playing better football, does have some injury concerns this week, can keep it going. They've won four out of five and six out of seven ATS. Two of the hottest point spread teams in the league. But the public is backing with the hottest team. Tennessee Titans are the biggest home dog for week number 12. Two more official public plays for this Sunday. Both are on the late afternoon card at 4 o'clock Eastern. Quick reminder, get the rest of November for free when you buy December. Right now, no promo code needed. Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com. Get there quicker with shortcut code WT.buzz slash SM. All right, let's look at those two late afternoon cards on two afternoon games on the late card Sunday afternoon at four o'clock Eastern. The Seattle Seahawks getting some public love this week as a four point home favorite against the Las Vegas Raiders. And once again, Seattle six and four in the season. They've been a point spread darling at six and four ATS as well. And this was expected to be one of the weaker teams in the league, yet they're in playoff contention. Meanwhile, the Raiders having a very disappointing season. Three and seven straight up. They've blown three leads of 17 points or more already this season. Uh, they entered this game just one and three straight up in ATS their last four. Uh, so it's understandable why the public would be fading the Raiders and also backing the Seahawks for a solid four and one straight up and against the spread their last five. But this is often what you see with these consensus plays. One team is hot, one team is not. The concern with the Raiders, though, is that they're just three and seven straight up on the season despite not turning the ball over much. In fact, Five of their last seven games, they have not turned the ball over, and they have only one turnover in the other two games. So their last seven games, in which they're just three and four straight up, the Raiders have two total turnovers. So basically, you can't play any better from a turnover perspective, and they're still just three and four straight up. So this is not a good Raiders squad, and it's understandable why the public is looking to fade them. They're also one of the worst defensive teams in the league uh, giving up a uh, six yards per play. Seattle's been one of the best offensive teams in the league, so they should definitely get some points. A Seattle team total over would obviously make some sense, almost seems too obvious. But the Seahawks have struggled defensively as well, giving up 5.8 yards per play. So this is a game in which the Raiders' offense might get back on track. Uh, Las Vegas has scored at least uh, 20 points or more in five of their last six, and or six or last seven, rather, and they have put up at least uh, 22 points or more in four of those seven games. They should get some points this week against a, a suspect Seattle defense. Once again, it looks like both offenses hold the edge in this game. And the public does like the Seattle Seahawks minus four at four o'clock Eastern. One other very public play in the late card. In fact, this is probably the most public side this week for Sunday. Of all the four games I'm mentioning here, if I had to choose one with the, that was the most public, it would be the LA Chargers minus three. And uh, once again, it's not necessarily a play on the Chargers. I think it's just a pure play against uh, the Arizona Cardinals, who are having a rough season as well at 4-7 and seven straight up, 5-6 and six against the number. Meanwhile, the Chargers are 5-5 five and five straight up, but they've actually been a very good point spread team, 7-3 and three against the spread, including back-to-back -back losses but covers the last two weeks against San Francisco and Kansas City, uh, two of the better teams in the league. Chargers lost by six and by three-point margins in primetime spotlight games. So you could make an argument this is a little bit of a flat spot. Even though they're off back-to-back -back losses, they were near misses, high-profile national TV games, and now a non-conference 
road game at Arizona could be a little bit of a flat spot for the Chargers. It was interesting. Last Monday night, you remember here on the video, I mentioned that the public was on the Arizona Cardinals. That was a public dog scenario. And uh, the 49ers won easily 38-10. We actually had a best bet on the 49ers for my clients at wagertalk.com last week for Monday Night Football. Part of that current 14-5 and all-sports run the last couple weeks since I made that offer. I get the rest of November free with December. And 49ers on Monday was one of those winners as we faded the Cardinals, a team that's really struggling this season. Uh, they're just... One and three straight up in ATS their last four. They have gone over the total five straight games. So the offense has been picking things up, but the defense has been just atrocious. They've given up 31 points or more in four of those last five games, and that's why they've gone over in five straight. Uh, we'll see if the Chargers can keep some focus here after back-to-back -back losses, a couple near misses. Uh, they've been absolutely terrible running the ball this season. Absolutely no running game whatsoever, except for that one game against the Browns when they had 238 yards. Uh, they've been held to 91 yards or less in five of their other six games, but they did put up 115 yards last week against Kansas City. So we'll see if they have some success running the ball against an Arizona rush defense that's been pretty bad this season. Uh, once again, the Chargers, perhaps I'd say of the four games I've mentioned, the Chargers are the most public side this Sunday for Week 12, and they're currently uh, minus three. There are some two and a halves out there. If you like the Chargers, I'd grab the two and a half because it does look like mostly threes, and I would expect it to definitely be minus three by kickoff late Sunday afternoon at 4.05 Eastern. All right, those are the four official uh, NFL fade the public plays for week number 12 this Sunday, November the 27th. There were three other games that were just a bit outside for making the cut. I'll give these to you as additional leans, not quite as public as the four I just mentioned, but three additional leans. We'll get to those in just a moment for Sunday. Quick reminder, once again, get the rest of November for free when you buy December. Now, if you're not ready to make the commitment for a full month of December, we do have another special at wagertalk.com this weekend, and that's seven days for just $69. Now, normally a three-day all-sports package is $59. You're getting seven days for just $69. So that's four extra days, more than 50% more for just $10 more. So if you want to try small just the next week, seven days for $69, all sports gets it done. Or, of course, if you want the rest of November for free, you get it when you join me for December. That offer has been up for over a week now. We've gone 14 and 5, 74% over the past week since I first made that offer available. I know some of you got on board. I appreciate it. Actually, many of you got on board, but some of you have been kicking yourself for not joining sooner. Why wait any longer? You still get the next week for free, the rest of November, plus all of December, the rest of 2022 for just $2.99. No promo code needed. Every football, college, and pro, every basketball, college, and pro play every day for the rest of this year right now for one low price. It's by December. Get the rest of November for free. I've got five strong college football best bets for Saturday, many on the late nighttime cards. If you're joining us Saturday afternoon, not too late to get the college football best bets. And, of course, all of you can still get in for Sunday and Monday night pro football as we had a huge 4 and one 80% weekend last week in college and NFL Sunday and Monday. And we're looking to do it again this weekend. I love this NFL card on Sunday. Take advantage right now. Get the rest of November free when you buy December. Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com. Get there quicker with shortcut code WT.buzz slash SM. All right, I gave you the four official public sides for this Sunday, week 12. Let's look at three additional leans that were just a bit outside for making the cut. And we'll go down once again in schedule order starting at 1 o'clock Eastern. Tampa Bay Buccaneers minus the three. Uh, Tampa Bay is looking pretty public here. In fact, I see a lot of three and a halves out there. We'll say three and a half. And uh, once again, if you still get a three, you want to grab it because this line will likely be three and a half on Sunday as Tampa Bay is looking pretty public. Uh, a Tampa Bay team that really was struggling this year had not covered a point spread since September until uh, two weeks ago overseas in Germany. They win 21-16, cover for, by about a field goal against Seattle. And I guess all of a sudden the public wants to back them because keep in mind the public was fading Tampa Bay in that game against Seattle a couple weeks ago over in Germany. We'll see if the bye helps this struggling offense. Tom Brady obviously has had a lot of off-field distractions this season, and they are struggling to move the ball, averaging just 18 points a game. And even in that win against a bad Seattle defense, as we talked about earlier, they scored only 21. In fact, Tampa Bay has now scored 21 points or less, actually 22 points or less in each of their last six games, and they've only covered once, and that was a couple weeks ago before the bye. Uh, Cleveland's a team that's a lot better uh, then they're overall three and seven straight up record, just four and six against the spread. Some really unfortunate losses this season. Overall, they're still averaging almost six yards per play, 5.8. They give up six yards per play. So uh, they have been below average defensively. We'll see if a mediocre Tampa Bay offense 
can take advantage. But once again, uh, some public love, some consensus towards Tampa Bay, minus three and a half. Also, the Dolphins, minus 14, are getting some public love this week. And this one's an interesting game to talk about because I've actually said quite often the last few weeks on some shows on Wager Talk Today, in the two years I've been doing this Fade the Public series, there's never been a double-digit favorite. And now we almost got one this week. Once again, Miami is not official uh, Fade the Public play, but I will give it to you as an additional lean as it just missed the cut. Dolphins minus 14 are definitely getting a look by the public this week. But once again, I don't think it's necessarily back in the 7-3 and three Dolphins because the public in general does not like to lay two touchdowns in the NFL. This is one of those situations I just think nobody wants to play Houston, who's the worst team in the league at 1-8-1 and one straight up. Um, public was fading Houston last week. They cashed with the Commanders 23-10. Uh, Houston has now lost five straight, and they failed to cover four of those five. However, the one cover was as a 14-point home dog on Thursday Night Football a few weeks ago. They lost by just 12 to the Eagles. And let's dig a little deeper over this five-game losing streak. In fact, going back to the beginning of October, they've lost six of their last seven. They've only covered two of those seven, but they've only lost one game by more than 14 points, which is this current line. So they'd be 6-1 and one against the spread the last seven games, getting 14 or more. We're actually 5-1-1 one, and one against the spread, I guess. Well, no, actually 6-1 because they only lost by 12 as a 14-point dog. So, look, they lost by 10, won outright by 7, lost by 18, lost by 7, lost by 12, lost by 8, lost by 13. So, yes, they'd be 6-1 and one against the spread, getting 14 or more of those last seven games. Every loss has been by 13 or less except for one of them. So it does look like this line's a little inflated. Uh, the problem is Miami's a team with a very good offense, six and a half yards per play this season, and they're more than capable, obviously, of opening this game up if they want to. But you do have to wonder if they are going to be a fully focused here. Four straight wins heading into their bye last week, so I'm not sure they needed the bye week when they got it. And they have a huge look ahead at San Francisco, at the Chargers, and at Buffalo. Three straight road games after this meaningless game against Houston. Is a potential flat spot here for Miami? Problem is, Texans just don't have much at quarterback. They just don't have much in the way of backdoor cover potential when they get behind in games. So, you know, it's definitely risky, obviously, to take a bad team like this. But I do think you can make an argument that it's not a great scheduling spot for the Miami Dolphins this week. So we'll see how it plays out. And uh, once again, Houston's been going through different quarterbacks all season. Uh, we'll see if there's any improvement with Allen back there this week. Uh, Allen is listed as the starter. They're getting two touchdowns. We'll see how it plays out. But right now, uh, there is a little bit of a public lean towards the Miami Dolphins, minus 14. One final game that was getting some public sentiment as well. We'll give this to you as another public underdog. You know, I mentioned the Titans were the biggest public dog this week. Second biggest public dog on Sunday is a lean towards the Chicago Bears. And um, there's also some quarterback situation in this game. Chicago's starter is still to be determined as we head into the weekend. And uh, Mike White's been listed as a Jets starter heading into the weekend. So both teams could be backup quarterbacks be using backup quarterbacks on Sunday. Uh, but the public is leaning towards the Bears here. And uh, once again, you know, they don't dig too deep. A lot of this consensus is just blind picking. And uh, the Bears plus the five and a half is getting some public love. Uh, but once again, with the quarterback uncertainty for both teams, it's a difficult handicap. Um, does look like a lot of points for a Bears team that might be just three and eight straight up, but has started to turn things around offensively with Justin Fields back there. But if he's not healthy, it's a whole different story and really hard to trust them. Uh, they have gone over, by the way, five straight games. Once again, that's because Fields has been playing great. Meanwhile, the Jets have gone under five straight games. So two total opposites here. Five overs for the Bears, five straight unders for the Jets. Jets have been getting it done with defense. Chicago has not. Chicago has lost four straight. They've given up 27 points or more in four straight games. Meanwhile, the Jets, over their last four games, have allowed 17 or less. Actually, let's go back over their last six games. They've held five of their last six opponents to 17 points or less. So it does appear that the Jets are probably better equipped to have a backup quarterback because they've had the much better defense this year. Uh, but the public doesn't care. They're leaning towards the Chicago Bears plus the five and a half. So once again, three additional leans that just missed the cut. The Buccaneers, the Miami Dolphins, and the Chicago Bears. And once again, your four official public sides this week are the Baltimore Ravens, the uh, Tennessee Titans, the biggest public dog this week, Seattle Seahawks, and probably the most public side that I saw was the LA Chargers on Sunday afternoon. Hey, look, hope you found this video useful. As always, if you do, give it a thumbs up, click the like button, hit subscribe, and hit the bell for instant alerts 
when these videos go live every week. My college football top 25 video is still available for Saturday if you're joining us on Saturday afternoon or evening. And then, of course, this NFL Fade the Public video goes up every Saturday afternoon for Sunday's games. This is week 12. We're about two-thirds, maybe three-quarters almost of the way through the season. Plenty of pro football to come, and that's even more of a reason to get on board with an all-sports, all-access for December and get the rest of November for free. 14 and 5, 74% all sports run the past week and a half in football and basketball. Isn't it time you started winning as well? Go to my page right now, Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com. Get there quicker with shortcut code WT.buzz slash SM. Get December all sports. You get the rest of November, this final week included, absolutely free. Hey, thanks for watching. As always, leave me some comments below. I love the comments. I read each and every one and I reply back. Let me know where you agree or disagree with these public sides this week. You know, it's a filter. It's part of the handicapping factor. The public's not always wrong. We look to fade them in select situations. Let me know where you think the best spots are to fade the public this week. Let me know about your two-team teasers. You know, on Thursday, I gave you some teaser recommendations for Thanksgiving. Those swept the board. In fact, no matter which side you teased on Thursday, you would have gone 6-0 and as all six sides in all three games covered six and seven-point teasers. Uh, the odds makers had a rough Thursday, to say the least, as a couple of the over-unders came right within the number as well. Let me know about your six-point teasers. There's some good ones on the board this week. Let me know you, where you think the best value is. Also, include some player props. I'd love to hear from you on your player props for the NFL. And be sure to check back all week long, Monday through Friday, right here on Wager Talk TV for some great live content. College football, college basketball, NBA shows on a daily basis, plus Wager Talk Today as well. Don't forget, you can download the Wager Talk TV app on your favorite mobile device. You can also listen to the show's podcast form on your favorite podcast apps. No matter what you do, hit subscribe, hit like, and comment below. Have a great weekend. Enjoy the NFL games on Sunday. Best of luck, and I'll talk to you again soon right here on Wager Talk TV.